Georgia voters have seen their polling places change since the June primary. 11 Alive analyzed data now showing the number of voters has exploded in Georgia since 2013, but the number of polling places has actually shrunk. Interesting dynamic that Chief Investigator Brendan Keefe discovered when those polling locations changes disproportionately those changes affect voters of color. Every vote counts, but every voter faces different challenges just to cast a ballot. If you don't know that your polling site has changed and you show up and you've only allotted that hour to get that done, then to get back to work, now you're disenfranchised because you weren't expecting that. A Klima Kondoker of the nonpartisan group All Voting is Local says Georgia has failed a simple math problem, adding voters while subtracting polling places. With millions of voters waiting to cast their ballots, it's unacceptable for us to have fewer locations. The system is a joke, and we're not laughing. Nearly half of all the black voters in Georgia live in the four metro Atlanta counties of Cobb, Gwinnett, DeKalb, and Fulton. For the June primary alone, Fulton closed 45 polling locations. Fulton's precinct issues were widespread, from southeast Atlanta to Midtown's Park Tavern and beyond. It's a math problem. They had 16,000 plus people who were registered to vote all coming to vote at that location. The situation you saw at Park Tavern was 100% driven by COVID, but was also exacerbated by Fulton County decisions. Gabriel Sterling oversees the new voting system. His boss, the Secretary of State, forced Fulton County to expand access for the general election. Even Fulton County has added dozens of polling places over what we saw in June, correct? They've added, not dozens, they've added 91 new polling locations. But that also means hundreds of thousands of election day voters will cast their ballots at a new location. When you move that polling place away from somebody, they become less likely to vote. Dr. Charles Stewart at MIT is an expert on voting lines. Is this intentional disenfranchisement of certain voters, particularly non-white voters, or is it simply the net effect of a system that needs to be overhauled? Voters in these communities um, get harmed coming and going, um, perennially underserved and disadvantaged, especially in times of crisis. And then the vote itself may be the only or the most effective mechanism to overcome these disparities. And there will be even greater frustrations when it's harder to vote. The nonpartisan Brennan Center for Justice found the average black voter waits 45% longer than the average white voter. How did we get here? The 2013 Shelby v. Holder decision by the U.S. Supreme Court struck down parts of the Voting Rights Act that required Georgia and other states to get pre-approval from the Justice Department before closing or moving a polling place. We have millions more voters since Shelby v. Holder but statistically, we've got fewer polling places. Is that accurate? That is, that is accurate, and those are county-level decisions. Now counties can just decide to close locations without providing cause. The best thing for Georgia voters has been three weeks of early voting and no excuse access to absentee ballots. But the longer lines we've seen serve as a warning, increased voter demand, and greater struggles to access the most basic right of democracy.